This is Calm AF, a podcast for humans who are hard on themselves. A podcast for the overthinkers, people pleasers, perfectionists, and overachievers. I'm Kristen Finch, and I'm going to teach you how to quiet that incessant negative chatter in your head. Because you know what a person with a calm mind can do? Anything they want. Grab your coffee, gorgeous soul, because today's the day you get calm AF. Hello, gorgeous soul. I am so happy to be with you today. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, Before we get started on today's episode, I want to share with you an audio clip from one of the recent Calm AF Life calls. So this was is shared with permission, but this woman, um, she has been in the program since the very beginning, and she actually emailed me all the way back in November before we had even opened enrollment. And she was like, listen, I want this so badly. I feel like everything that you talk about with this program is exactly what I need, but I have never never stuck with anything for more than three days in my entire life. And I want to invest here, but I just hear that I'm I'm apprehensive. And so I was like, I got you. I've created this with you in mind. This is for people who, you know, need that daily, weekly, monthly accountability. So she joined and listen, we have been together for more than 100 days. She has not given up. She has made these amazing transformations, and there is no sign of her slowing down. So this is a little clip um, from her after she received some coaching on a recent call. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing with this program. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels like this is the key I have been looking for to stop spinning my wheels. I can finally just start the engine and go. I love it so much. If this feels like something that you're interested in, you got to join us now. The spring sale is going on right now, 25% off. Use code SPRINGAF. Join now. It's almost over the sale. All right. Let's talk about the power of your words, why the words you choose matter so much. So many of you already know this, but if you didn't know, in my past life, I was a speech language pathologist. So I worked with people with speech and language disorders, both developmental and acquired. So babies who had feeding difficulties or people who had suffered traumatic brain injuries or who had a stroke and lots and lots of children with different speech and language delays and differences. So I got both my bachelor's and my master's degrees in communication disorders and sciences. And the reason why I'm sharing this today is because I spent six full years learning um, the effects that language has on humans and when and and the power of language. And then after my six years of school, I spent almost 15 years, give or take some leaves when my kids were babies, um, practicing this, practicing, you know, seeing in real life the power that language has on us as humans. Um, and what I saw for all those years was that the toll that these, you know, difficulties with speech and language has on their families, on their partners, on their parents, and obviously on the individuals themselves. So when I moved into coaching from speech therapy, this was the filter that I came into it with, right? My understanding of the power of communication, the power of language, the power of words. In both my careers as a speech pathologist and as a life coach, I've used my education to help my clients rewire their brains and help them create new neural pathways so they can live more fulfilling lives. But one of the things that has made the biggest impact on me, being able to watch a client move from discouraged and frustrated to efficient and free, both in as a speech pathologist and a life coach, is how powerful your words are in that journey. This actually reminds me of a good speech therapist story. (laughs) So this was back in the day. Uh, I was working as, I was doing my internship in a hospital, and we had a patient who had had a stroke. He was pretty young. He was like mid-50s, early 50s, and he was the CEO of his company. And we had worked with him in inpatient, and he had done really well, and now he was coming in a few times a week for outpatient, and he had gone back to work, and things were going well, but 
he, you know, had a few little deficits that he was working on. He was able to understand and really express pretty well, but he still was having trouble and he got caught up with some word recall types of things. So that's what we were doing. He had a he had a board meeting that he was presenting in a few days and really just wanted to move through and get kind of more fluent in his speech. So he was going through and everything was fine, but <laughs> every time he tried to retrieve the word shareholder, it came out cup holder. <laughs> now, listen, I have always been a believer that we take the things, instead of making them big freaking deals, we lighten up about them. So obviously, every time this happened, we were just laughing about it, right? Like, we're going to figure this out. No big deal. You're saying cup holder instead of shareholder. We're going to figure it out, but we're going to have fun while we do it. So this is what we did. We tweaked it. We're like, you need to just find a word that doesn't require so much effort for you to recall. So he came up with, instead of saying shareholder, he would say holder of the shares, <laughs> which sounds very like holder of the shares, right? So he was like, well, I can't just say that. They're going to look at me like, what's wrong with this guy? So we're like, well, what if you just did it that way? What if you just made it kind of funny? So that's what he did. He took this, this problem he was having with this word, and he tweaked the words, and he made it funny. And so he went, you know, at the beginning of his speech, he was like, thank you for all for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for, you know, the members of the board and the most important people in this room, the holders of the shares, right? And, and, and then he just kept calling them that throughout the, throughout the speech that he made. So this is just such a great example <laughs> I think of a great way to like tweak the words you're using. <laughs> the holder of the shares. So, I am all about tweaking in in coaching as well, especially when it comes to the words that we're choosing to say and think. So, here's another client example. This is now a current client, a coaching client. She is untangling and unlearning a really old story that she has about herself that she's discovered is keeping her really, really small. It's keeping her from speaking her truth and going after this thing that she really wants to do. So we took this old story and we've been coming up with new ways. We've been unlearning it. And she came up with a new thought that as soon as she said it out loud, it gave her goosebumps over her whole entire body, which that's what we call a full body yes. So we took this full body yes, new set of words, and built a new neural pathway. We started practicing it. We started proving it to be true. So she went off with her new thought, with her tweaked words, and she came back the next week and she was like frustrated. And she was almost feeling a little bit despair because the whole like full body yes feeling was very quickly replaced by doubt. And she was like, you know, I can't seem to access that that feeling anymore. I can't, I can't, I don't actually believe it's possible. And here's what I told her. When you are rewiring beliefs, you have to take this into account. This is what's going to happen. You've got to remember that there is going to be a gap between what you believe and what you want to believe. And there is a journey from the words and thoughts you are currently believing to the place where you want to believe. Trying to convince yourself through sheer will to believe something that you don't yet, like trying to jump from where you believe from where you are right now to where you want to be, it's a waste of time. It's kind of like gaslighting yourself. Like, no, 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 no. You do believe this. Come on, come on. You do believe this. This is what just look in the mirror and tell yourself you love your body. Look in the mirror and convince yourself I am worthy. Just say it until you believe it. What that does though, when you try to jump to the end, It creates this distrust between your mind and your body since your body is just responding energetically to your thoughts, right? And if it's if you're trying to convince it to believe the thought that's not true, it's not going to trust you anymore, right? Your body is just responding energetically and energy doesn't lie. But your thoughts, they are liar, liar, pants on fire. It's just a constant steady stream. The words that you choose have a profound impact on how you see yourself, how you see the people around you, how you see the world around you, because your brain is wired 
to believe whatever you tell it to believe. I'm going to say that again. Your brain is wired to believe whatever you tell it to believe, which is actually the coolest fucking thing because it means that whatever you believe about yourself right now, it's you only believe that because you told yourself to believe, which means if you don't like it, you can change it. Yes, it takes time, but not only is it possible, it's inevitable. That's just how brains work. This is why when people come to me and they're like, oh, well, I tried to rewire. I just don't think rewiring works for me. I'm like, nah, that's not how it works. Your brain isn't like scheming against you, like twirling its mustache, like, ah, yeah, she's a loser and she's always going to be a loser. Your brain isn't doing that. Your brain is just a computer that is responding to whatever code you are inputting. The code being the words you're choosing. So if you want to teach your computer brain something new, you need to give it new words. Okay, so back to my client. She kept trying to shift her thoughts, but at least 10 times during the session when she'd be like, okay, yeah, 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 but I just don't believe it. I don't, I still just don't believe it. So I stopped her and I was like, listen, that's true. You don't believe this new thought yet, but I want you to think about the words you're choosing to speak over and over right now. You have said, but I don't believe it at least 10 times now. I want you to ask yourself, why are you choosing to repeat those words? These are the words you're trying not to believe, but what you're doing is you're hardwiring them even more. And she was like, oh my God, I didn't even know I was, I didn't even know I was saying that. I didn't realize I was doing that. And that is the thing about hardwired patterns. They are tricky little suckers. They just pop out. Those pathways are so well-traveled that you don't even have to think about it. They are automatic, which means you must make an intentional effort to be mindful of the words you are speaking, choosing, and saying. You can't jump to the end and convince your brain to believe something. It doesn't yet, but you can tweak the code. So my client and I came up with some more empowering words so that she wouldn't be constantly reinforcing what she didn't want but also she wasn't gaslighting herself into believing something that she didn't yet. So instead of, I don't believe this, we played around with some different words, some different coding. I'm working on believing this. I want to believe this. I don't believe this yet, but maybe I will someday. I'm finding ways to believe this thought. Every day I'm getting closer to believing this. And we landed on those words. Right, that her when she said it, her body was like, Yes, her brain was like, Yes, they connected. They're like, This is one we can get on board with. So, from then on, whenever her brain tried to choose or did choose, I don't believe this is possible, she would just catch it. No big deal. She'd be like, Oops, she would pause and she would then mindfully choose the more empowering words. I'm so close to really believing this. I think a lot of people underestimate the impact that negative self-talk has on them. I think a lot of people think it's kind of harmless or it's just, you know, this, this thing that all humans have to do. We just talk like this to ourselves. But this impact it has is not only on your mental well-being, but on your ability to make changes and achieve goals and improve your life. It's not harmless. It's like you're incessantly chipping away at your confidence and self-esteem without your permission and without your attention. So you've got to start choosing your words mindfully. So let's get into how. First, you've got to have the awareness of how powerful your words are, how much they matter. Now, hopefully this episode, what I've already been saying, is opening your eyes to this. And then from now on, you're just going to have this information, okay? So once you are aware of your words, once you're noticing your thoughts, you can start asking yourself questions about them. Now, this is something that takes practice because, remember, your brain is wired to believe whatever you tell it to believe. This is why it's good to have a different person, like a coach or a therapist, to help you with this. Because like when I'm sitting with my clients, I'm way better at seeing their words as not the absolute truth. The same, my coach does the same thing for me, right? So here are some questions you can ask yourselves about the thoughts you're having. Are these words representative of how my future self talks to themselves? 
Are these words reinforcing my old neural pathways or are they strengthening the new ones? Do these words make me feel powerless or empowered? And once you know which words you want to stop hardwiring, then you can start tweaking the words. Now remember, don't gaslight yourself here. That is a surefire way to create even more distrust between your mind and your body. That's why I actually don't usually recommend using positive affirmations. I think a lot of people gaslight themselves with affirmations. Um, I, there's a time and a place. I'm not saying that they're bad or they're wrong. I just think don't they can easily be used against yourself. You can repeat a thought over and over, but, but that thought will never become like embodied belief if your body doesn't believe it. Okay, That's why I'm mindfully choosing the word tweaking here. Tweaking means finding words that feel better and feel true enough in your body. So an easy way to tweak your words is to add disclaimers. Okay, So if the thought that you want to believe is, I believe that I am worthy of love, you might add the disclaimers of something like, I am working on believing this. I'm starting to believe. I don't believe it yet, but I'm getting closer every day. I can't wait until I believe this thought, right? Or my clients, I am so close to really believing this. Those words, choosing those, adding those disclaimers, they aren't reinforcing the old hardwire beliefs that you are trying to unlearn. They are empowering words that whatever you are working on changing is coming. They are moving you towards, those disclaimers are moving you towards what you want. And every time your old thought pops up, which it will, You just pause, you say, whoops, what I meant to say was, and then you choose that empowered thought instead. And that's really it. That's really all you have to do because every single time you do that, every single time you pause and you choose the more empowered words without beating yourself up about it, you are strengthening that neural pathway, which over time will become the automatic path because... That's how brains work. So, all right, I also, I just wanna add one quick thing before we end. I also think it's really important to be mindful of who you're hanging out with and the words they're choosing, okay? If you are wanting to improve an area of your life or maybe lots of different areas of your life, but the conversations that you are having with people are like reinforcing the beliefs that you don't wanna be hardwiring, you might need to find some new people (laughs) or at the very least limit the time you spend with those people. That can be hard, but I really believe it's necessary. I had a personal experience with this. After my fiance died in a car accident, keeping my head above water felt like a full-time job. I was working so hard to not spiral down into total despair So I was choosing self-talk like, it's hard now, it's supposed to be hard, of course it's hard now, but there will be a day someday that I feel a little better. I am looking forward to the day that this doesn't feel so bad, okay? So I was working really hard on that. And one of my very best friends who just wanted to support me and just loved me so much. But every time we hung out, she would just talk about how hard it was for her and how she doesn't feel like it's getting any easier. And and first of all, I was like bitter. I was like, oh, it's hard for you? Oh, oh, I see. It's, let me be here for you. <laughs> but she was she was so kind and loving. But our conversations were not helping me move through that grief. They were keeping me stuck. So. I had to limit my time with her. Like I just stopped picking up the call, the the phone when she was calling and I was struggling. I would have reasons to only spend short periods of time with her because I knew that what was coming after our conversation was me having to work even harder to get myself out of the pit. Okay? So, I know this from experience. This is why I'm sharing this at the end of this episode is because that will make it harder. You want to pay attention to the words the people around you are using. Invest more time with people who are empowering and less time with people who keep you stuck. Okay, I just wanted to add that. I hope you 
were changed by this episode, remember as you go off today that your words are incredibly powerful. The words you're choosing to speak, to use, to think are always either supporting what you want or reinforcing what you don't want. So you just pause, choose mindfully, and watch not only the thoughts you are having, but your conversations as well. And if you don't have people that you can have empowered conversations with, come hang out with me. You have an open invitation at all times to join me and really immerse yourself in a community where you are repeatedly reminded that your words matter and that the words that you're speaking to yourself are bullshit and you need to stop believing them. That's how I'm going to lovingly coach you through it <laughs> so you can get unstuck. Um, Call Me Off Life is always open for enrollment. The spring sale is happening right now, 25% off. It ends in a few days, so it's time to get off the fence and just get in here. The link to join is in the show notes. You want to hurry up before this deal ends. All right, gorgeous soul. I love you so very much. Choose those words carefully. I will see you next week. If you love this podcast, you will love Call Me F Life. It's a self-paced, lifetime access DIY course that teaches you all the concepts that I talk about here, from nervous system regulation to manifesting with ease. And since we know that true change doesn't happen just because you know what to do, you also get an all access pass to coaching calls and accountability so you don't stay stuck and you don't give up. The best investment you could ever make is in yourself. Calm AF Life is here for you now. Life's not waiting. Let's get you aligned with your Calm AF Self Gorgeous Soul. I cannot wait to meet you. Go to kristenfinch.com and join me today.